Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and finally, welcome to the Season of Blood, aka Season 2 of Diablo 4. I've spent long hours grinding on the first day so that I could wake up today and just make this video. The new Blood Harvest event, which takes over a single zone like small hell tides or something, is pretty broken. It's currently the best way we know how to generate both legendaries and all the resources you're going to need to unlock your vampire powers, as well as upgrade them so they're insanely strong and make sure you can activate them however you want. So yeah, in short, it's pretty busted, it's stupidly effective, and I think that's very clear. The moment that I hit World Tier 3 at the low 40s, I went straight to a nightmare level Blood Harvest and just opened all the chest, collecting a full set of sacreds in minutes without actual combat. Because the keys that I gathered back in World Tier 2 work in Tier 3, you can just unapologetically run around opening chests, getting loads of potent blood, the packs, all the sacreds you could possibly need to initially, you know, upgrade and get that set up for Tier 3, and a pile of legendaries while you're doing it. Obviously, there's more to it than that, though. A lot to showcase and explain, this video should serve to tell you everything you need to know so you can feel confident in when to go do Blood Harvest and for how long to actually be efficient. So let's just begin. So, the three main details to your Blood Harvest. We have our new vampiric powers. We have the upgrading of those vampiric powers, like so. And then you have your consumable packs, which are literally just something that you click and then apply to gear to put packs onto them. We can look at our vampiric powers and go, hey, here are the packs that I need. I need four ferocity, and hey, I've got four. And that's because I've used a lot of the packs of eternity to apply these skulls to my gear to actually be able to run quite the hefty set that I'm running right now. The terminology in this season is pretty bad, in my opinion. It's like they bogged everything down in differently named systems and details to confuse you. So I'm going to do my best to clear things up for you. Let's just take off all these powers except one. The one I've kept is Metamorphosis, and it requires two points into each of the packs. So, Ferocity, Divinity, and Eternity. Where this comes from is your gear, and that's shown on the left actually in this menu. And again, at the top, you can see how many I've currently got equipped on the left. So I've got four, I've got four, and I've got 12 equipped currently. And since I only need two in each, they're all activating, and this is active. And there's a red circle around it to show, hey, this one's active. To reach the target packs that we need to activate it, you're going to need to get that on your gear. Now, as you get drops, you can see that some of them just have different packs on them. This one has five skulls on it, for example. But RNG sometimes just isn't good enough. So let's take my boots here. I have three skulls on them to get me to 12 packs of eternity, which is what I needed for the full set. Let's pretend that this has all the wrong packs on it. So I'm going to take some of this cleansing acid that we get through all the different content, including what we're talking about today in the Blood Harvest. We're going to right click that and apply it to a specific piece of gear that gets rid of the, all the packs on it then we can take these packs that we have the applyable ones right click that and then apply it over and over to the item that I want. Now I've got the three skulls that I need. Let's put in the powers that I actually want. So I've got my powers slotted back in. They're all active and lit up and I'm good to go. That's basically the system without all the weird terminology and hopefully just a quick showcase to help you understand it. So to get the cleansing acid we just showed and the packs that we need to actually apply to our gear to make the right set for whatever powers we're running, we need to do a lot of content, but a lot of it comes from blood harvest as well as potent blood, which is really important as well. While you're clearing the blood harvest, you're going to get this blood, potent blood. And at the bottom of your vampire screen, you can spend 25 of it to unlock new powers or upgrade them. To begin with, you'll have none of these and you'll just pick one and unlock it. My advice is to unlock every single one that you can get through blood and then start upgrading after that. Through the harvest, you get so much potent blood, you can get all the powers unlocked very quickly, very early on, and it's well worth doing. However, there's a new sort of bounty board system in the game called the Hunter's Acclaim, which you'll see in different towns. When I click on it, I can see where I'm currently at in the progress of that. I've made it just below the level of the Vampiric Power Accursed Touch. As you can see, that's unlocked here, as well as the Sanguine Brace. I would strongly recommend that you progress your Hunter's Acclaim board as priority until you reach both Vampiric Powers and get them unlocked, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Through your Season's Blessings, you can pick the new Urn of Blood, which actually increases how fast you get Hunter's Acclaim from Blood Harvest activity specifically, so it's perfect synergy. So I'd recommend you level up this first instead of the Urn of Aggression for raw monster kill XP to get that done ASAP. The sooner you get your powers unlocked, the sooner all your builds are available and possible, and that's priority number one. You can always go back and undo your urns and then replace them so they go into the XP to begin with, which is probably the best thing to do. There is one main power that's unlocked from a different method, and that is metamorphosis, the thing that we're all desperately after. It's just kind of insane and, and universally probably the best power most people will use. This is unlocked for the main story with a new season. When you complete that, you get it. Other than that, 
everything comes from your current zone that has the Blood Harvest activated. Now, as I said, Blood Harvest is not the best XP option, but it is a very good one while the Whispers are available because these have been massively buffed in this season. Just completing these mini Grim Favors just to get some Grim Favors is worth good XP. And then going to hand it in is worth even more. It's ultra good now. So going to your Blood Harvest every time it's available and you have new Whispers to do is worth your time because while you're there, you're going to be getting lots of XP from the th at least three Whispers that are there, the blood that you need to actually unlock your powers and upgrade them, the packs to then always have what you need to activate the powers you're looking to run, and you're going to be getting an absolute pile of legendaries and gear, which is vital if you just hit nightmare mode and you need your new sacred gear. So let's look at the main details of actually playing in a Blood Harvest. I can check my map and see there's three main objectives. It's usually kill two Blood Seekers, and it's usually kill a bunch of the things in the area. In this case, it's 25 of two specific named mobs, which will show up as red dots when I find them or go near them on the map. In this case, I also have to find five villagers and save them, and it also shows on the map where a villager is, so I can go to that and just open it. To find Blood Seekers, you can do a few things, but the easiest way is to go to the altars and give 15 Blood Lures. Lures are at the top right, which is that sort of blood vial, which sort of drags them or teases them to come to you. So here is one of these altars, and you need 15 of the lures total. To get lures to do this, you just need to kill mobs, elites, or you can find the many seekers cache around the place and open them, and usually these have both potent lud and lures in them, which are a great source of them, as well as the packs that you can use to apply to your armor. With 15 of them, you can use an altar, which will guarantee spawn in two of the named elites, the blood seekers, that you'll need for one of the whispers. So this is one of the easiest ways to get that done. I've just killed those two and immediately got two legendaries. This is how broken it is. It's so consistent that I'm getting legendaries in this area that I do think they're going to nerf it. Another detail of this area, though, and really important to know, is the main blood harvest itself. This symbol isn't just a marker to show you where the zone is. There's actually something there. If I come over to that symbol, you see that there's these three blood lure pedestals, and each one requires 50 blood lures. That's quite a lot to say that, you know, you're probably not going to get more than 50 or, or so in one run when you just do the whispers and leave. But what you can do is activate these, and as the blood harvest changes to a new zone, it actually continues to be there. Say if I activate this bottom one, it would still be active in the next zone where the next blood harvest was. So there's no real massive downside to activating them, because when you activate all three of them like we did in a three-man party, it spawns a ton of mobs, a load of potent blood, and you get a bunch of your blood lures back from all the mobs and elites. It was insane. It was something like six to eight legendaries for all three of us each from all the elites that spawned. It was incredibly worth it. So activating this 150 blood lure summon is well worth it and probably the priority number one after getting the whispers done themselves. I'd also like to make you aware of a vampire power that seems to be broken. As you can see, it just activated and did half the health of all these enemies and nearly killed them for me. That triggers every four seconds, and I think it's overtuned, and it's also probably going to get nerfed. It's Hemomancy here that's causing that, the Vampiric Power, that only requires three of the skulls. Initially, your attacks deal 40% of your maximum life as physical damage to nearby enemies every four seconds, and it just happens whenever you do anything, really. Because I've upgraded it to level two, it's gone up from 40% to 60% of my maximum life. So as a Blood Necromancer who's stacking health, it's kind of broken, but really good for everyone, and I strongly recommend it while you're leveling. And like I say, I kind of think it's a bit overtuned and surely gonna get nerfed. But I thought the same about Barber and then they never did anything about that, so you never know. As I said though, you can just literally run around and open chests and you'll constantly get everything you need from lures to potent blood, the packs, and obviously all the gear, including legendaries very commonly. That from the moment that you hit tier three and need to get your sacred set to get the big upgrade from that, this is where I would come to gear up. This is where I would come to gear up in general whenever I needed a new set of gear because it's so strong compared to everything else. To efficient run this, I believe you should come here whenever the whispers are available, clear them out, and then move on with your life. Unless you're desperately in need of blood specifically to get all your powers unlocked, which fair enough we all were to begin with, you should prioritize this place every time it moves to come do and complete all of the whispers and get the resources you need to keep upgrading your gear. Then I would never overstay unless I specifically needed more potent blood, again to get my powers unlocked. And just like that, I've completed all the whispers on the map, which means I'm ready to hand in the whispers at the tree of the whispers. I've absolutely filled my inventory and got some legendaries and I've barely done any events just to do some showcasing for this video. I've gained almost a full level just doing that one set of the Blood Harvest. I also gained a load of Hunter's Acclaim XP, which means I now have my final Vampiric Power, the Accursed 
touch. So looking at our vampiric power, it's all lit up. I've unlocked all of them. I gained about 200 potent blood so I can continue to just unlock or activate and improve the current powers that I'm using. And now I'm going to take out my ashes from the urn that was powering up the Hunter's Acclaim to put it into XP because that matters more to me now that I want to reach level 100. But yeah, there's my quick overview of the Blood Harvest and how it works and the details you need to know. In short, an overview. Always go there when a fresh one is available with Whispers to do. The XP is going to be worth it because the Whispers are going to carry. And then you'll also be getting all of that blood. Super important to unlock all of the powers and upgrade them. Getting everything to level 2 that you're actively running is a bare minimum for a build in, say, Nightmare Mode. In terms of gear, equipment and legendaries, you'll be absolutely drowning in it as you do the events. Particularly opening the chests and using the altars or the blood pedestals for 50 of the lures in the middle. The pedestals in the middle that cost 50 will progress into the next area where the next blood harvest is. So you can save up and use them and progress in that way if you need to. The moment that you hit nightmare mode, you should absolutely first priority go to a blood harvest, open all the chests, get a set of sacreds, upgrade your gear and do as much content there as you can to get yourself a set of sacred legendaries as soon as possible. By doing all of this, you'll get a ton of active appliable packs which will allow you to sort out whatever gear set you end up with so that you can activate the powers that you want to run with whatever build you're doing. Overall I found this an incredibly fast way to gear up and something you absolutely don't want to ignore. It is well worth your time. I hope this was all the information you could possibly need for this topic. If you guys have any more tips or information about this then you can drop it in the comments. Maybe you'll help someone. For now though I've been Hollow, you've been you. Until next time thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye